Hi there. In this second video around behavioral theories uh, of the types of management and leadership styles, we're going to look at the Tannenbaum Schmidt continuum. And basically, what we see here is um, the questions that we're asking are at two levels. Yeah. First of all, who is making the decision? Whether it would be more manager led versus subordinate led? Yeah. And secondly, how much can the subordinate contribute to the decision and the decision making process? Yeah. And over here, for instance, in the manager centered leadership, you have very little uh, contribution by the subordinates, while over here, yeah, you have all the subordinates almost making all of the decisions and they have to ultimately come up with the decision. So this is literally a continuum because this, what we're going to see is literally all of the different uh, behaviors and the different um, options that you have as a management. So let's say on this side it is the manager who makes the decision and there will be little or no contribution of the subordinates. Yeah, it will be one-way traffic, yeah, I will communicate it to you, yeah, and it's downwards, yeah, and, and that's it, yeah. There will be uh, subordinates will not be asked to contribute to the decision. In this area, for instance, the manager will be selling the decision to the team, and uh, of course, at that moment in time, yeah, it will be yeah, more democratic. Here, the manager, for instance, presents ideas uh, and asks also for contribution yeah, of the um, subordinates yeah, in order to make sure that they come up with the right decision. Yeah. Um, then, in, in, at this level, for instance, the manager presents the decision, however, it can be subject to change. At that moment in time, yeah, during the presentation, yeah, a uh, discussion can take place, and at that moment in time, changes can be made uh, to the actual decision. While down here, for instance, the manager just presents the problems and asks you know, the team, the subordinates, to come up with the answers. And here, basically, the manager gives the limits within uh, which the team can operate and basically yeah, um, the manager almost becomes yeah, part of the team yeah, and there will be little or no decisions made by the manager itself. And what you see is literally yeah, an area where here you have the areas of freedom for subordinates which of course is very very high yeah, while over here there is literally no freedom for the subordinates everything will be done through the manager and the manager, of course, will be using his, his or her authority in order to drive the decision through. Now, all of this, of course, yeah, um, is related also to different management styles. And in fact, we are talking of three of them. One here is the autocratic management style. Over here you have the democratic uh, management style. And last but not least, yeah, we have what we call laissez-faire, yeah, which is, uh, as you can imagine, a little bit chaotic. Let's talk about these, each of these management styles. The autocratic management style, as you can imagine, it is the manager yeah, who makes the decision with no input yeah, by uh, his or her subordinates. Yeah. It would be typically in um, an area or an industry where uh, through the past and the history there will be lots of yeah, autocratic leaders in that area um, but you will also have of course uh, as the business grows it will be very very difficult to keep up this particular uh, leadership style because as the business grows yeah, um, you know the pressure also will be put on the leader to come up with the right decisions within those companies by the way very few individuals will be making decisions for a very simple and therefore they always will be delegated upwards or decisions will be made by committees 
because if, you, of course, you come up with the wrong decision, it will be far easier to fire uh, and blame a, an individual and get rid of him or her than it is far more difficult to um, get rid of a committee and therefore that's the way decisions typically are being made within autocratic yeah, organizations. As the business grows, and of course it will be expanding in different countries and all kinds of stuff, as I said, it will be far, far easier, far more difficult, sorry, for leaders to know it all. And so typically what we'll see is yeah, they will be, be moving on to a more democratic leadership style. Because basically what that means is if you expand in countries like India, China and all that kind of stuff, what you want to do is also you want to make sure that local people who are, get hired within the business, that they are contributing to decisions to make sure that those decisions, of course, also make sense for the local market. Yeah? They will know the culture, they, don't know, they will know the language, yeah? and therefore, yeah, typically what they will do is make sure that yeah, those decisions are um, supported by the local um, team and, and therefore they have a higher chance to become a lot more successful. Well, of course, at this end you have the laissez-faire leadership yeah, and this is, as you can imagine, a lot more chaotic. By the way, this type of leadership typically, of course, will happen in knowledge industries um, for instance, yeah, software applications, but also things like media, advertising and all that stuff because you want to make sure that your subordinates come up with good ideas, that they are contributing to the process in order to make sure that you drive, for instance, very good advertising campaigns for your customers I mean, and so on and so forth. And at that moment in time, of course, you will give your subordinates a lot more freedom to work in and to work for. I hope this makes sense and I'll speak to you soon.